Salwete Omnes. Welcome back to the channel. <laughs> I am not getting stuck at that. <laughs> Let's try that again. Salwete Omnes. Welcome back to the channel. So, as you might be able to tell, I have changed the channel name. So we are no longer going to be Archeo Vlogs here, we're going to be Diocles. Um, there's a little bit to that. One, well, I just kind of felt like Archeo Vlogs was a little too restrictive of a channel name. So I didn't want to be locked in in just archaeology or just moto vlogs or vlogs in general. Um, I wanted it to be something that's kind of ambiguous, uh, but if you understand the name Diocles, then you probably understand um, what kind of content I'm into and what kind of uh, stuff in general I'm into. So, you might be asking yourself, well, who the heck is Diocles? Uh, well, it's me! Uh, no. <laughs> uh, I guess I am going to be known as Diocles from now on, but uh, <laughs> that's, uh, I don't want to flatter myself necessarily. So, Diocles, or his full name, Gaius Apuleius Diocles, he was a Roman charioteer. Uh, so he was born in 104 CE, and he died in 146 CE, I want to say. Um, so to put that into perspective, he was born during the reign of Emperor Trajan, and uh, his charioteering was during the reign of Hadrian, uh, so the famous Hadrian who built the wall in Great Britain. So... Uh, but Trajan was a much better emperor. <laughs> Let's not, uh, you know, get around that fact. Um, <laughs> shout out, shout out Trajan. So, in case you weren't familiar with charioteering, um, a lot of people will relate it to NASCAR. I, I don't think that's fair necessarily, because just because the two are. Uh, racing organizations <laughs> in this oval shape uh, it doesn't mean that they are one of the same uh, okay I, okay it's a fair assessment let's be real um, <laughs> but the thing is not everyone likes NASCAR but in ancient Rome a lot of people these days think it's all about the gladiatorial fight uh, that's not true um, it's honestly about the chariot races um, they were the big hit back in the day. Panamat Kirkinsis for a reason, right? Oh, hello there, Kappa. Alright, so a little background on who Diocles was. Like I said, he was born in 104 CE. He was born in the city of Lucanum, which is in the province of Lusitania, and that's modern-day Portugal. So, he grew up kind of around all of the uh, chariot races and decided that at the age of about 18, probably, he was going to give it a shot. So he went to the city of Ilerda, which is in modern day Catalonia, and he tried it out. And he got pretty good at it and decided that pretty much that same year he was going to go to Rome and race in the Circus Maximus. And uh, it's kind of history from there. <laughs> so for two years, he raced for the Whites. And so brief little background on that. There are four chariot teams in chariot racing. There's the Whites, Greens, Reds, and Blues. So the, for the first, um, actually for, I think it was a little bit more than two years. First couple of years, he raced for the Whites. Um, but it was two years until the poor guy actually got any victory. So he, he stuck around and gave it his all for as long as he could, and um, it ended up paying for him in the long run, big time. More on that a little bit later. So most of his career was with the Reds. So over his whole career in chariot racing, he raced a total of 4,257 races. That is a ton. But to make things even more interesting, he won 1,400, I believe it's 1,462 of those races, um, which is on its own kind of remarkable. But then to make things even more interesting, about, I think it's 1,480. Um, I'll put these numbers up on the screen. Um, but, uh, yeah, a little over 1,400 of the other races, 
he ended up getting either in third place or most prominently in second place and the reason why he got in second place so much is because he did this little thing where he would uh, he would stay behind a little bit and wait until the last minute and he would cross the finish line uh, right at the last second you get that photo finish if you will and that's what made him so darn popular if people would be very interested in seeing you know is he going to pull it off is he going to be able to cross that line at the last second and become the victor and sure as heck a lot of people betting would definitely take advantage of that because you know he it's not like he was going to win every single time so if somebody was betting against him they did stand kind of a chance to win but you know everyone who had that hope that he was going to be able to pull through um, they uh they would also get a, a pretty sizable chunk of that as well so another interesting fact about him is uh he had a horse i don't think there's any name for it but uh there is a, a term for the type of horse it's called a ducanarius so that just basically means 200. um so what that means is he had a horse that was able to get him through 200 victories and that's really notable because that as far as i have seen is uh not something that happens very often at all a lot of these horses would get worked uh, pretty much literally to death. Uh, it's a very, very intensive sport. And, uh, you know, cue Ben Hur seems as much as I can. So if you were to go online right now and look up Ducanarius horse, you're going to only find Diocles. Uh, so the guy uh, must have treated his horses very well. Uh, his steeds. <laughs> and uh, that's something that I can uh, definitely respect because. For someone to be able to spend so much time and uh, resources into charioteering and be able to win so much must mean that he, you know, really does care for his horses. Kind of like us motorcycle riders really care about our uh, <laughs> aluminum and <laughs> plastic and sometimes iron steeds. <laughs> So, also, if you were to look up anything about Diocles, more than likely what you're going to be seeing is his total earnings. And uh, the moniker that he's been given as the highest paid athlete to have ever existed. That's, that's kind of true, but kind of not. So, um, obviously when it comes to anything regarding money, and especially when it's over the span of 2,000 years, it's a little bit of a gray area. Um, but we do have a little bit of information on what he earned. So it was about, I think it was, what a nice bike. So I think he earned about 36 million sesterces. And a sesterce, it literally translates to two and a half. So it's two and a half asses. And an ass is a um, bronze coin. Uh, so it's kind of it's kind of hard to uh, translate that to anything but um, a good way to do it is in uh, poundage 36 million sesterces is about um, 360,000 alrei uh, which is um, plural for areus which some of you might be able to understand what that is that's gold uh, so literally it's gold coin though um, and that I believe is about two and a half thousand uh, tons of gold like by weight um, so that is a ton I don't know how much gold is in Fort Knox but uh, maybe that would be a good little metric I'll, I'll throw that up here uh, so to put that into further perspective to understand how much he was paid if we were to literally translate it um, I think it's like seven million US dollars, which is like, oh my gosh, you know, that's not the highest paid. You know, we have Tiger Woods and we have Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan's, I think, one billion or something like that. So how the heck did this guy get that moniker the highest paid of all time? Well, see, that's where things get a little fuzzy. So the buying power of his total earnings we can kind of translate it into goods and services, if you will. <laughs> so he could buy 
he gets 34,000 tons of wheat with his total earnings. And um, that alone could feed the entire city, that's, you know, metropolitan city of Rome for a whole year. Or uh, his total earnings could pay for one fifth of a year of the Roman army at its height. So, here's where things get a little funky. One fifth of a year of the strongest military is where people are able to kind of extrapolate his, uh, his net worth, if you will. So if he were to have existed today and been making the same amount of money and the same kind of equivalency, where he could hypothetically pay for one fifth of the entire year of the strongest army at the time, which <laughs> in reference people are claiming is the United States Army. So one fifth would equal to uh, 16 billion US dollars. So that's why people. <laughs> this guy just doesn't want to go until it's fully up, which you know what? Stop. Trains can't. So that's how things can get a little fuzzy when it comes to that. He either made 36 million Ceceres, or he made 7 million US on just translating the two, or on the buying power, he made 16 billion. Um, I think it's a little more interesting to go with the billion number, so that's what I'll go with. Um, not that he ever did end up paying for the Roman army, but uh, should he have chose to, then he could have. Well, no, he, he actually couldn't have. Um, the emperors would not have been cool with that. <laughs> so all that history aside, uh, why did I choose Diocles to be the channel name? Well, I mean, it's kind of obvious. Chariot racing, motorcycles, yeah, that's, you know, kind of a dead given. But also, you know, the the fact that he was an ancient Roman, technically, yes, I know he wasn't born in Rome, but, you know, if you're born in the arms of Rome, you're a Roman. So I, uh, I very much love that. And the fact that, you know, the guy grew up, you know, kind of, not, not destitute necessarily, but, you know, he wasn't born into great amounts of wealth. You know, he made a name for himself in this world, and for 2,000 years now, you know, he is remembered, and that's impressive. You know, I'm super envious of that. You know, he's not some god or son of god or anything like that. You know, he's a chariot racer who enjoyed what he was doing and went out on his own terms. He didn't die and the chariot races. He ended up retiring and went to Frinesti, Italy, and just kind of chilled. And, uh, you know, we don't know exactly when he died, but, you know, probably at a ripe old age. Of course, we assume it's, I think it's uh, after 146 C, so kind of like, oh, well, you know, 42 is not that old. But it's kind of old, especially back then. And, you know, chariot racing is pretty hard on the body. Um, yeah, so I think it's fitting. Um, so what I'll go with for now. I like the name. It sounds cool, and uh, it has a lot of meaning to me. So, yeah. Tell me what you think about the channel name. Uh, tell me what you think about having a history time with Diocles kind of situation. I'd love to be able to go deep dive into a whole bunch of stuff when it comes to ancient history. It doesn't have to be just chariot racing. Admittedly, I don't really know much about it. Um, I kind of threw it to the side like a lot of people do. They tend to think that, you know, it's all about gladiatorial fights and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, maybe I'll look into more stuff about chariot racing. Maybe I'll actually give Ben-Hur a chance. I never have because, admittedly, I'm an atheist and the religious overtones in that <laughs> just really, you know, hasn't struck my fancy. <laughs> um, but maybe I'll give it a shot for the uh, historical importance, if you will. So yeah, if there's further topics you want me to talk about, uh, this is going to fall on a Just Talking Tuesday, and maybe that can be the, the format, if you will. Uh, maybe I can try to do something where I'm uploading uh, regularly on a, a Just Talking Tuesdays, every Tuesday, and then kind of, you know, wherever I feel like thrown around here and there. So like, you know, Food Fridays can still happen. Um, I just 
got surgery on my shoulder, so that's going to be a little hard to pull off for a little while, so uh, sorry about that. Um, at least I could, I could go get food by myself, but I'm not going to go by myself. Uh, I'm going to go with my wife. <laughs> uh, so yeah, let me know if you like the video, if you like the, uh, the concept, doing a little history uh, shallow dive, if you will. Um, hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments if you have any other ideas on anything you'd like to watch or have me cover. But most importantly, make sure that you subscribe if you like this kind of content and you want to see more of it in the future. And of course, hit that little bell. Well, this is going to be boring. I typically like to leave these outros where I'm trying to figure out where the heck I am, but I ended up on a street where I know where it is and where it goes, so <laughs> it's not going to be as funny. Uh, I don't know. So, well, uh, <laughs> Darn, I don't know where I am. Let's hope that I can figure it out. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> Alright. Bye y'all.